It was just a couple of hours before midnight. Some of the 2,200 passengers of a large, luxurious ocean liner were still partying in the beautiful first-class lounges. The rest were asleep in their beds. Some of them in spacious cabins filled with paintings and decorated with ornate carvings. Others in tiny rooms below sea level. All of these people had only one thing in common. On that chilly April night, all of them were heading from Southampton in England to New York City. The ship was called the Titanic, and at that time, it was considered unsinkable. At the very beginning of the journey, the liner nearly collided with the steamship New York. Luckily, the Titanic managed to pass by the other vessel with several feet to spare. A common sigh of relief escaped the passengers crowding the liner's decks. Little did they know what was awaiting them in the near future. Several days later, when the ship was already in the North Atlantic Ocean, 370 miles away from Newfoundland, the unthinkable happened. At about 11.40 p.m. on April 14th, those who were still awake were knocked over by some mysterious and powerful force. Passengers who were already in their beds got catapulted to the floor. Screams and total confusion. Months before the disaster struck, a ginormous chunk of ice had broken away from a glacier in southwest Greenland. It was made of the snow that had fallen about 100,000 years ago, when mammoths were still roaming the planet. When the iceberg just started its journey, it was a huge thing. Almost 1,700 feet long, it also weighed 75 million tons. But then it floated much further to the south than normal right into the area the Titanic had to cross on its way to North America. Even after melting into the water for months, the iceberg still weighed an impressive 1.5 million tons. Its top part was towering over the water for almost 100 feet. Even so, it looked harmless next to the massive ocean liner, but only at first glance. What people saw was just a tiny part of a jumbo piece of ice. The largest part of any iceberg is hidden under the surface, with a mere one-tenth visible above the water. The Titanic iceberg wasn't an exception. The moment the ship collided with it, the vessel was doomed. Unable to divert its course, it crashed into the ice, rupturing at least five of its hull compartments. They immediately started to fill with water, which then flooded each succeeding compartment. The front of the ship started to sink. This raised the back part almost vertically into the air. And then, with a deafening roar, the liner broke in half. The rest is history. But what if what we know about the disaster is not true? What if the ship hadn't been wrecked by an iceberg? What if it had been something more treacherous and way more alive that sank the Titanic? Far, far beneath the surface, in the ocean's dim, dark depths, a shadow lurks. Imagine an enormous creature, round, flat, and full of arms, or rather, powerful tentacles. It resembles a giant squid or octopus, but much, much bigger. Its descriptions go from as long as 10 ships to a mile and a half long. Rumor has it unlucky sailors sometimes mistake the sea monster for an island. But instead of stepping on dry land, they're dragged down into the ocean. These people meet the Kraken a legendary creature feared by everyone who sets off on a sea voyage. Usually, the kraken haunts the seas off the coasts of Norway through Iceland and all the way to Greenland. Who knows what has brought the beast further away from home? The waters of the North Atlantic are just as chilly, and the creature feels good and curious. Once it notices the Titanic, the ship has no chances to escape its attention. It's dark. That's why those on the ocean liner don't notice the first alarm bells. The water around the ship starts to bubble. If you strain your ears, you can hear bizarre gurgling sounds. If you strain your eyes, you can see thousands of fish and jellyfish rising to the surface. They feel something's up down below. But even if someone on the Titanic noticed this hectic activity, they wouldn't have time to get out of the way of the horrifying beast. Its enormous size and super long and strong tentacles turn it into a predator you can't escape. A nine-year-old boy standing on the deck knows nothing about the sea monster. He's just watching countless small islands rising out of the sea very, very slowly. The kid doesn't understand why, but all the blood in his body suddenly runs cold. 
Hundreds of tiny fish are leaping about in the pools between these sandbanks. But soon, they roll off into the water over the sides of the ginormous something. Several sharp points appear above the surface. The intrigued boy thinks they look like horns. They keep growing thicker and thicker the higher they rise. Soon, they're towering over the massive Titanic, dwarfing the ship. These horns are the Kraken's dreaded arms. The boy is paralyzed by fear. But then, he spots the monster's eye. It's as big as an elephant. It makes the kid come to his senses and dash away, screaming like there's no tomorrow. The boy's shouting attracts people. They gather along the ship's side, trying to spot what scared the child so much. And then they see. First one, then more and more passengers and crew members lean over the railing to get a better look. They aren't being careless, they're just in shock. Indeed, it's hard to believe your eyes when they tell you a dreaded beast is about to attack the ship you're on. Plus, it's dark, and no one can see clearly what that huge shadow is. But the next several minutes prove it's not a mirage. All of a sudden, the creature rises one of its monstrous arms and stretches it toward the vessel. It might very well be longer than the liner's entire hull. Women start screaming and fainting. Men seem to be just as terrified. Those who have managed to keep their heads clear sweep up kids and run for shelter. That's when the first powerful hit shakes the vessel. The Kraken's had enough waiting. It's ready for action. Panic engulfs people on board the Titanic. Running around aimlessly and screaming, they create chaos that makes the beast even more interested. Normally, the monster just wants to be left alone. It rests deep down on the ocean floor, using its long tentacles to tether itself to the bottom and lazily hunt for food. It only rises to the surface when the weather's unusually warm, or when it gets disturbed. The Titanic is probably too massive and loud. It draws the creature out of its slumber. When the beast gets to the surface and sees a large, glistening boat, wow, the thing mesmerizes the creature. It holds out one of its tentacles to touch the unusual construction. The material is hard, and the beast wonders if the thing will break when squeezed. Without wasting much time, it wraps several arms around the ship and tries to squish it. Tiny creatures fussing around, falling overboard, and making annoying high-pitched noises start to irritate the Kraken. It's getting angry. Easing its grip, the monster circles the Titanic several times, getting ready for the next attack. This time, the strike is much stronger. It bends the metal and makes it brittle. One more movement of a deaf tentacle, and the ship starts to fill with water. The Kraken retreats, as if to enjoy the results of its efforts. But then, it notices the ship trying to speed up in futile attempts to put some distance between itself and the monster. People on board the Titanic heave a sigh of relief. The beast is nowhere in sight. Little do they know that the Kraken never lets its toys get away. The ship is beginning to slow down. Its rear part is slowly lifting up, and the front is going down underwater. Passengers and crew members are falling over onto the decks. Most of them are too scared to make a sound. That's why everything's happening in almost complete eerie silence. Until the ship breaks into two parts under its own weight. The crash is so powerful that it scares away even the Kraken. Spooked, the beast dives back into the ocean, which creates a massive boiling whirlpool in that spot. The suction is dragging what's left of the Titanic to the depths of the ocean. The most tragic thing here, though, the Kraken isn't even interested in people on board the ship. This creature is content to munch on fish. It doesn't need bigger prey. It's the animal's curiosity that's now pulling the huge ship down to the bottom. Does the majestic liner have any hope? I think you know the answer.